Part of our concept we developed with farmers and with industries and communities to utilize the organic waste the industry and the community is producing and the demand for organic fertilizer and soil conditioners from the farmers and maybe nurseries or horticulture industries. It doesn't make sense for communities to take the waste and put it into landfill or transport it a long distance then process it and then from there it's transported again long distance to the farmer. It's rather smarter to get the farmers involved to know how to handle organic waste materials, how to work on land, to accept, to, to, to process the material either on a worm farm as in our case here or maybe on a compost site and then utilize the fertilizer on their farmland. This way the farmer is in control of the product quality, uh, the process, he's got first hand on the product so he can uh, apply it to, to the best uh, advantage to his, 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 proper, his, uh, his farm management and as well it's saving a lot of money to the ratepayers so it's benefiting both and we are here to help farmers and communities to find together and to develop the best strategy and the best technology and to integrate the system into their farm management. So what we are receiving here on this, on this dairy farm is the organic certified fibre from the pulp mill and some of their sludges from their oxidation ponds. All the products are safe to work with, the animals can graze around it. After a period of time we are going to harvest the material, we stockpile it. The farmer will benefit because he gets a product on site, he can utilise it on his farmland, on his pasture and on his maize crop. So the worm farm is actually integrated into the crop rotation if you like. Um, so we operate two or three years with a worm farm and then we prepare the land, taking off the, worm, the final vermicast, leave some of it behind and then the farmer is growing lucerne for example or maize to benefit uh, with the most with the, with the cash crop uh, after the worm farm. And then we move on to the next paddocks and we probably come back after 10 years time and start all over again with our cycle. Uh, we don't want to spend a lot of money on building expensive plants to process organic material. We know and we have proven it for many years now that it can be done by integrating it into the farm system and considering the soil underneath as well. So as you can see we get the organic waste here it's actually placed directly onto the soil which means the microorganisms from the soil can actually move, migrate into the product and inoculate the product. But we can only do this if the material we are applying is safe to the soil and the underlying groundwater. So we have to find and to balance and to mix and blend the product in a way so it's safe to the environment, to the soil, without leaching, for example, nitrogen. So this material here is organic certified and the soil, we tested the soil underneath, will not increase in nutrients significantly. It's just the way it should be, environmental safe, concentrating on producing a product cost effective. I want to show you some of the other worms we are breeding here on site. As we mentioned, we are operating on a pasture, on a dairy farm, so we will find that already established earthworms in the pasture soil entering the worm farm and then start breeding in the vermicast of our tiger worms. So these are southern worms. They are worms that are living approximately in the top 30 centimeters, so in the top soil, and they are very important to process organic waste uh, and incorporate it into the soil and make the best out of the nutrients. We are able to harvest those worms not just for for your backyard, for your garden, for, for um, domestic supply, but also we can pick up those windrows when these worms are at their peak, so when they get a high population of these, and then take these to your paddock, to your farm, to your orchard, to inoculate your soil with these earthworms.